what was attractive 10 years ago but now isn't anymore. Guys 10 years ago was 2012, not 2002. Well duck. Gonna go put some new tennis balls on my walker. Don't want to scratch the wood floor up. Look at this guy flexing that he has his own floors. And his own tennis balls. In this economy? He doesn't have all four. Guarantee it. Me. 2020 definitely sounded attractive 10 years ago. The answer to these questions is always eyebrows. Paper thin eyebrows, giant painted eyebrows every few years the trend changes and the old trend is mocked. Just embrace your natural brows. Clean em up a tad if you want. 100% this. Growing up I was made fun of for my big bushy brows. Then seemingly overnight suddenly I was getting complimented for not having thin, overplucked brows. I actually thought I was being mocked that's how sudden it was. It taught me a valuable lesson about trends and being fashionable. It's all made up, do what makes you feel happy. What this thread teaches me is that literally no one actually remembers what 2012 fashion was. ITT, millennials saying things from not 10 but 20 years ago. The world ended in 2012, thank you very much. Damn the Mayans were right. But it was the symbolic end, not the literal end. Hipster culture made a 180. Now that's just a bad stereotype of a millennial. You remember the like. Groomed lumberjack look? I like to think I'm still like that, but I have gained 20 pounds. My beard is better now at least. Lumbersexual. I'm a woman and once had a guy tell me I looked very lumbersexual, not sure if it was a compliment or not. I was wearing flannel and rubber boots but to be fair I live in Alaska so that's what most of us wear. Having a mustache tattooed on the side of your finger. My sister got that tattoo this year. Can you do an ama about your sister? This. I must ask her a question. Streaming services. Everyone loved their Netflix and Hulu, which were the only options to ever exist and will be the only ones to have all the movies forever for a reasonable price. Justin Bieber haircut on guys. And guys flicking their head to get their bangs out of their eyes every 15 seconds. I picture the goth kid from South Park U2.B. Conformists. Social media ooh we can communicate to everyone. Duck, we have to listen to everyone. Edit, thanks for the awards, D. It was also way more focused on tight-knit real social circles as a way to keep up with people you may not see all the time. I mean there was literally a time when people thought it was weird to have social media friends that you didn't also know in real life. Now it's just become this giant open world cluster duck of toxic anger and random strangers shouting at each other or trying to sell each other shit or evangelizing their social political propaganda with a huge part of it being manipulated by the media and marketing people driving at clicks. Edit, Chumbawamba summed it up better than I ever could. It literally was a business choice by FB, and now IG, in order to serve more ads. All people really wanted was a chronological feed from old to new of their peer group, and that's it. Now it's an endless scroll of whatever gets the most engagement, which is the cluster duck you describe. The metrics prove it. Toxic anger is the most engaging content. Yeah, I hate it. I just want to be able to scroll until I see a post from last time I scrolled. And then exit the app until next time. Now it's a guessing game. Have I scrolled enough to make sure I didn't miss any updates from my actual friends and not just suggested posts that I don't give a duck about? It's fucking useless. Supporting Coney 2012. Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. K Spacey. He had such a charisma. But now we know. Somehow Family Guy knew. Everyone knew. It's the same open secret bullshit that protected Weinstein for decades. Makes you wonder what open secrets there are now. Jared Leto is the name that gets thrown about a lot when these threads kick off. You mean the guy who has a cult that does cult island retreats? Yeah, nothing weird or creepy is going to come out about that guy once his star fades a little bit more. Who knows what kind of morbing he's been doing when it's morbing time. Mayan calendars. This is perfect. So many were dead convinced that the Mayan calendar proved the earth would end in 2012. 
everyone obsessed with mustaches and owls. I'm still obsessed with owls. Owls everyone is fond of owls. Her Super Bowl. Those breast cancer eye boobies silicone bracelets. A little more than 10 years ago, but remember that fad where everyone wore a hundred of those silly bands bracelets all down their arms? Even the kids who were posturing to be street, because they sold mid for $20 G, in my suburban high school were ducking with silly bands heavy. Wearing silly bands while I count up these silly bands comes to mind from that era, no doubt LMFAO. Facebook The Facebook age gap is weird to me. I'm in my late 20s and almost everyone I went to school with still regularly posts on Facebook. But my cousin who's in her early 20s doesn't know anyone who still uses Facebook. Mid-30s, my generation don't use FB, just stalk. Yup. I used Facebook when it was the thing to do because everyone had it. I technically still have Facebook but I only use it to stalk or to post a monumental life event, and even then it's still a fraction of the effort of older posts. Here's the thing, old FB was fun. Before the timeline update I got so much activity, now it's all ads. The timeline update did heavy damage to the value of FB to the users, I don't even care what the stock price says regarding this. Now those bastards shove 50 ads in my face before I get to see one thing from my friends list. Girls rocking that Han Solo look. These are just horse girls now. Having a high level Farmville farm. Speak for yourself. Show me your bushels of corn baby. The physical home button. Still rocking my Galaxy S7. And I have no idea what to do when someone hands me a phone without a physical button at the bottom. Blizzard. I don't know, it's still one of the best items on Dairy Queen's menu. The yogurt at the back of my fridge. Give it another 10 years. By then it'll be old enough to vote. Reminds me a couple years back my in-laws were cleaning out their fridge. One said, darling, if we took this cheese on a trip, just counting its time in our house, it'd be old enough to rent the car for us. Actually, I think it legally has to start filing taxes. This was the origin of the family jokes well your cheese should be paying taxes and cheese can't pay taxes. Often used in arguments that one has lost but wants to escape. Anything having to do with Hollister. I have that scent burned forever into my brain. My classmates. Swear, every one of them is on crack now. A bunch of mine died from the opioid epidemic on the mid-2000s into the 2010s. My former principal posted a sad message listing all the former students that had died. Out of the list, close to 20 were from my graduating class, and we only had 210 students in my graduating class to begin with. I think more people died from the opioid epidemic in my hometown than anything else. It's sad cause growing up with those people you'd never think they'd get hooked on pills. Some of them had one surgery or a broken bone and never got off the pills. I swear, there has to be something going on with the drug companies there. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but they keep pumping the area full of pain pills. Then they get them hooked on subs and never take them off. My sister has been on them for over 10 years. The whole time she was doing pills, meth, and coke too. It's sad to see people so ducked up that they rob their family, commit murder, and rob stores just to get one more dose. It's a massive conspiracy. Basically every manufacturer misrepresented the risks, screwed with the dosage, created kickback programs, and hired consulting firms like McKinsey to get as many people hooked as fast as possible. This was all exacerbated by the economic fallout of 2008, and you can see a similar, but much worse version, hit Russia in the years following massive privatization at the behest of the IMF. If you want to see drug deaths on an unprecedented scale roll back public safely nets, privatize key social programs, and redistribute wealth upwards. Works every time.